But we begin with the escalating fight over the future of the United States Supreme Court. It's now been a day and a half since Judge Sonia Sotomayor was introduced to the country as President Obama's first Supreme Court nominee. Criticism of her from the right started immediately from conservative advocacy groups. It then picked up steam among conservative commentators and is now coming from elected Republican leaders and those who aspire to be elected Republican leaders someday. Republican Senator John Ensign, for example, issued a statement calling into question the summa cum laude Princeton graduates' intelligence, saying, quote, I will work with my colleagues and thoroughly review Judge Sotomayor's record to make sure she has the right intellect. Republican Senator James Inhofe of Oklahoma issued a statement expressing his concerns about the nominee and saying the Senate needed to assess, quote, her ability to rule fairly without undue influence from her own personal race, gender, or political preferences. Yeah, I remember Inhofe grilling Sam Alito about whether he saw things as too much of a man, about whether him being white was going to affect his judgment too much. Non-elected Republicans have gone a few steps lower uh, with their attacks. For example, here's former senior advisor to President Bush, Karl Rove. I'm not really certain how intellectually strong she will be. She has not been uh, very strong on the Second Circuit. She's not liked by her colleagues. She's not particularly respected by her colleagues. Mr. Rowe followed up that appearance with a debate last night at New York City's Radio City Music Hall, at which the moderator, Charlie Rose, asserted that Judge Sotomayor was smart. Mr. Rove responded, quote, not necessarily. I know lots of stupid people who went to Ivy League schools. Former Republican Congressman Tom Tancredo was one of many Republicans to pounce on Judge Sotomayor's statement that her background as a Latina gives her a different perspective than judges who are white and male. Mr. Tancredo blasted that statement on MSNBC's The Ed Show yesterday. I'm telling you, she appears to be a racist. She said things wow. that are racist in any other context. That's exactly how we would portray it. And there's no one that would get on the Supreme Court saying a thing like that except for a Hispanic woman. Which is why how all those other Hispanic women judges got there as well. Free pass. Former Republican House Speaker Newt Gingrich chose to make his contribution to the Hispanic woman judge is racist derby uh, by, by, by Twitter. He said, quote, white man racist nominee would be forced to withdraw. Latina woman racist should also withdraw. Between calling her stupid and racist, her critics on the right have also found time to criticize Judge Sotomayor as just plain unqualified, as someone who is taking away a job that maybe rightfully would be held by another white guy. Here's the executive director of the conservative organization, the Committee for Justice. This is someone who clearly was picked because she's a woman and Hispanic, um, not because she's the best qualified. I could certainly see red and purple state Democrats balking at it, and she may very well have to withdraw her nomination. She'll have to withdraw. Echoing the notion that she was only picked because she's Hispanic was MSNBC political analyst Pat Buchanan, affectionately known here as Uncle Pat. She is also an affirmative action pick, Chris. Clearly, the president was down to four choices, all four of them women, and he picked a Hispanic. Taking that line of attack to its extreme was conservative talk radio host and Fox News host as well, Glenn Beck. It is like, hey, Hispanic chick lady, you're empathetic? She says, yep. They say, you're in. That's the way it really works. That's the way it really works. I have been wondering. This is the character thus far of the opposition from the right to Sonia Sotomayor. Will it work? Will calling her stupid and racist and Hispanic chick lady stop her from getting this job? Probably not. Barring something unforeseen, Judge Sotomayor appears to have the votes she's going to need to get through. That's not secret information. That is Washington common wisdom. It is plainly evident to everyone involved. So the second question is, why do this? And that's a calculation about political capital. If you think you spend political capital by attacking a judicial nominee, it doesn't seem like much use to waste that capital on someone who everybody thinks is going to get confirmed anyway. If, on the other hand, you think that you build up your political capital, you build up your political profile, you increase your political power by attacking a nominee, then, then it makes sense to come after a Sonia Sotomayor with both political barrels. And then it makes sense to ask... What kind of Republican Party and what kind of conservative movement is this fight 
building. Joining us now is Mark McKinnon, former media advisor for President George W. Bush and advisor to Senator John McCain. He's now a contributor to the Daily Beast. Mr. McKinnon, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me on, Rachel. Let me ask you about the sort of premise of my analysis here, which sure. is that um, Judge Sotomayor is probably going to be confirmed no matter what the criticism is, unless something that we don't know about now comes to light. Do you think that's an appropriate assumption? Well, not only is it an assumption, the uh, minority leader of, of jurisdiction, Jeff Sessions, said that he thinks that she'll probably be confirmed that there won't be a, uh, a uh, filibuster and that, that there's a good chance that he could end up voting for her. Mm -hmm. and, and so, yes, I think it's very likely that she will be confirmed. I, I just think that this is a classic example. You know, in politics in both parties, there's just a reflex to shoot at anything that moves. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be refreshing if just for once uh, a nominee, a Supreme Court nominee like this gets named, who, who has clearly has, has qualified strong credentials, nominated by a former Republican president, wouldn't it be nice if just for once a political party and, and, and members of that party just saluted and said, you know what, nice play. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say the same thing about Justice Roberts when he was picked in, in the Democratic response to him. But the, the Republican right, Party right now is clawing its way to the bottom. We've got 23 percent of the American electorate supporting them, seen as a sort of, you know, bitter partisan party right now and, and sort of anti-immigrant, anti-Hispanic. And, and I just think that this sends a lot of the wrong signals to independents and, and, and soft Republican voters out there who are leaving the party in droves. And you say that as a Republican, as somebody who loves the Republican Party. I say it as a proud Republican and, you know, as, as a progressive and moderate Republican. But, I, you know, I just would hope that there's room for us still. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there's a lot of voices in the party that seem to be crowding and shouting us out and shouting us down all the time. Well, let me ask you about uh, one of those um, crowding and shouting incidents right now that's making a, that's having a, a, that's been getting a lot of attention, and that is uh, the attacks on Colin Powell. And I don't care so much about the attacks on Colin Powell from Rush Limbaugh because I feel like Mr. Limbaugh sort of is his own is his own dynamic. But there have been very sharp attacks against him from former Vice President Dick Cheney. Um, Mr. Cheney uh, sort of dialed that back a little bit in an interview yeah. on CNBC, but glad, they have had this that. have had this back and forth. What do you what do you make about that? What do you make of that? Well, at the very least, there's there's. Uh, by the way, I was glad to see Dick Cheney did dial that back today mm -hmm. and, and and explained his comments. He, he said he was sorry. He thought that he had left the party and was was glad to learn that he hadn't. But nevertheless, there's been a lot of bod, bad body language toward people like Colin Powell and Colin Powell specifically in the party. Uh, sort of suggesting that, you know, unless you uh, swallow the, the hard right Republican orthodoxy, that, that, you know, that there's not room for you. And, you know, listen, a four-star general, former secretary of state, um, head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, if we don't have room for Colin Powell, then, you know, we are on our way to permanent minority status forever. Well, the, the mystery here for me, though, is that... Nobody's been standing up for Colin Powell. I mean, you just did. <laughs> but that's not actually been part of this yeah, dynamic. It's pretty lonely out here, I'm afraid. It really is. And it seems like I, I know that Colin Powell endorsed Barack Obama, and I realize that is a political sin that he committed in the eyes of his fellow Republicans, just as it would be on the Democratic side if you'd had somebody of his stature endorse the Republican nominee. But it's, it's striking to me that really nobody's backing him up. And... I wonder if that's because the attacks are coming from Dick Cheney, people don't want to cross Dick Cheney, or if Colin Powell really doesn't have friends in the party. I, I think he does, and I think there are lots and lots of Republicans like me who are, are moderate and feel uh, like they want a, a home in the Republican Party, feel it's the right place to be. Uh, but they are greatly concerned about the fact that, that they don't see more people come to the defense of people like Colin Powell. But, but anecdotally, I have lots of Republican friends who say, I love Colin Powell. You know, we need more Colin Powells. We, you know, we're, we're losing... Republicans in the Northeast and in a lot of parts of the country. But I don't want to criticize Dick Cheney. Is that the other side of it, or? I, I don't know. I just think that the the, the the voices on the Republican far right have just become incredibly amplified and sort of dominating the party right now. Now there's going to be a struggle over the next four or eight years for to see. You know, that's a healthy debate and a good one to have. And I remember the Democrats having the same debate eight years ago. So yeah, it's it's part of the physics of politics. Mark, the elephant in the living room here, um, which is a bad pun given what we're talking about, <laughs> is is that while the former vice president, Dick Cheney, is sort of everywhere, the former president, uh, President Bush, is really nowhere. Not only no public appearances, but no comment yeah. um, on any of this stuff. I know you've known him for a very long time. Do you expect him to weigh in? Do you think he cares about this fight? I don't expect him to weigh in. He is a genuinely gracious and decent man, regardless of what you think about his politics. And he is committed to staying off the radar screen and out of the president's business. Uh, you know, he just thinks that it's... Uh, uh, 
it, it is protocol for a past president to remain in the past and not get and not step into the middle of the business of the current president. He, he genuinely, uh, you know, has a fondness and respect for President Obama. I think it was mutual that, that they developed that mutual respect through the transition process. And, and he, he genuinely uh, hopes that Barack Obama is a successful president. Do you think that he feels that protocol extends to the vice presidency as well? Could he be somebody to rein in Dick Cheney, I, I, either on protocol or politics? I don't know. I don't know. And, 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 and I haven't had that conversation with him. So, and if I had, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway. <laughs> I guess that's right. <laughs> of course, that's every, the thing that everybody's wondering. We all were curious about their dynamics in the White House while they were in office. And they're, they're, they've taken such different approaches since they left office. It's just uh, one of those great unknowns right now. Mark McKinnon, former advisor to President Bush and Senator McCain, contributor now to the Daily Beast. It's really nice to come in. Nice hey, to see pleasure. you. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on.